In this video, we're going to learn about nuclear fission and fusion. So let's start off by talk about, talking about nuclear fission. When you think about fission, you might think about the word fissure, a split. And so nuclear fission is when one atom's nucleus splits apart. It splits into smaller pieces. And the way that this works, when you look at the reaction, if you look at the uranium-235 on the left, you can see that it's added a neutron. So a neutron collides with the nucleus of the uranium, and then that splits into smaller barium and krypton atoms, and it also kicks off three extra neutrons. And those neutrons continue to strike the other nuclei of the other uranium atoms around it. So it, the energy is released also a tremendous amount of energy, and it's used for lots of things, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Those extra neutrons, you put one in and you get three out. So let's talk about what happens with that. You probably heard the term chain reaction before. What happens is, if you look over here on the left, you can see that first neutron bumps into an atom, and then that atom splits and splits off a couple of neutrons, and those continue to split other atoms. And what we do is those atoms will split until they're not splitting off enough neutrons to split the atoms. That's called a subcritical mass. So sub, you can probably remember, meaning under. So for a small amount of uranium or plutonium, something like that, the neutrons may leave the, ad the sample before they hit any other atoms. When you have a larger sample, you have what's called supercritical mass or critical mass. When you have enough of the neutrons being generated uh, to continue to split the atoms, so if you have more of that sample than you need to sustain that chain reaction, you have what's called supercritical mass. We can use subcritical mass for nuclear power. Supercritical mass has some other uses, and we'll talk about that. So with nuclear power, the way that it works is we use uh, uranium or plutonium fuel, and energy is produced by being transferred as heat to a coolant. So what happens is, this is what it looks like inside of a nuclear reactor. You have these fuel rods, so that would be uranium or plutonium, something like that. And then you've got the reaction occurring. You've got neutrons moving between these fuel rods, keeping that chain reaction going. And then as the energy is given off, this cooling fluid circulates around those fuel rods and it moves from the fuel rods. The coolant takes the heat away to run a turbine or a generator to generate electricity. These control rods up here at the top, those are used to control the, the rate of the reaction. So if you don't control the reaction, it'll run wide open, and that's when you have what's called a nuclear meltdown. What happens is those, those rods can be dropped down between those fuel rods, and they'll absorb those neutrons to keep them from transferring from one fuel rod to another. And so when that coolant is heated as the reaction goes on, you can use that hot coolant like a coal flame in a coal plant to boil water. That generates steam to turn a turbine. So if you look at what a nuclear power plant looks like, here's the reactor part of it. You've heard of like a nuclear reactor core. You can see that on the left. And then you can see that there's um, a steam container. So the coolant from that nuclear reactor is going through the steam, heating the steam. The steam goes over to the right where the turbine is, and then it goes down and it's cooled. So typically when you find a nuclear power plant, it's near a lake or a river. Uh, there are some that are close to here, like McGuire Nuclear Power Plant is located on Lake Norman. And if you go near that power plant, um, I've been in that lake before, if you go near the power plant, it's actually quite warm in that area. But that, that cool water from the lake or the river is used to cool the steam. The coolant that is touching that reactor core never leaves the confinement shell, so it's designed to prevent radiation leaks. So you may wonder why people are hesitant to use nuclear power. There was a, a really serious explosion in Chernobyl uh, many years ago. That was in Russia. And the plane exploded because they made a number of mistakes. Um, you've also heard of the Fukushima disaster in Japan. So 
you know, you're aware of how dangerous nuclear power can be if it's not controlled properly. All right, so let's talk about other uses of nuclear fission. This is what happens when you have supercritical mass. This is a picture of the mushroom cloud from Nagasaki, Japan. It's a runaway fission reaction. So you've probably heard of atomic bombs, an atom bomb or an A-bomb. What happens uh, with that is we have a runaway fission reaction that results in an explosion. So if you look at the top picture, that's like Fat Man. So you can see that there was a conventional chemical explosive here, and then there were two subcritical pieces of uranium-235. It was dropped on Hiroshima, and when that chemical explosive went off, it forced those two pieces of uranium-235 together, and it became, a, there was enough then at that point to have supercritical mass, which was that runaway uh, reaction that caused the explosion at Hiroshima. And then there's Little Boy. So with Little Boy, they ran out of uranium and they ended up using plutonium, surrounded it with conventional explosives. And then when they set off those explosives, it compressed that plutonium core, and that's how that reached critical mass. Here's a little cartoon. Hope you enjoy it. If you're not sure what it means, ask me in class. We'll talk about it. All right, and then let's talk about fusion. You may have heard the term fuse or fusion before. Uh, fusion is when we have atoms where we combine the nuclei. So if you look, you can see in all of these reactions, they're different ones, but you can see you've got two small atoms combining to become a larger atom. This is hydrogen, but with a larger mass number. Two hydrogens becoming a helium, two heliums becoming a larger helium uh, with a larger mass number, and two hydrogens. And so what happens, those were the reactions that show uh, what happens with fusion in the sun. So we're combining hydrogen to make helium. They require a tremendous amount of energy to start, much more energy than fission requires, and extremely high temperatures. That's why we haven't ever been able to use it as a power source. Uh, we are combining two positively charged nuclei. Remember that like charges repel, and so they have to be moving fast enough to overcome those repulsions. But I do want to just show you what it looks like. You can see at the top you've got these uh, two small atoms joining to become another atom and then joining, uh, sorry, these are protons. You've got these two protons joining to form, a, a, they've got a proton and a neutron here, and then we've got another proton coming in. And so eventually they form larger and larger atoms. And they're giving off gamma rays, and you'll remember from our earlier discussion that gamma rays are pretty strong. So nuclear fusion can also be used for nuclear weapons. You may have heard of hydrogen bombs or H-bombs, thermonuclear bombs. They're different from atomic bombs. What happens is it uses a fission reaction to start a fusion reaction. So remember that uh, Fat Man and Little Boy, those were fission bombs. This actually uses a fission bomb here. Uh, you can see this primary explosion to start that secondary explosion, that fusion bomb, which gives out more, uh, more energy. This was really the Little Boy design. We just talked about the fission bomb part of that. So the atom bomb is the detonator for the hydrogen bomb. All right, let's talk real quickly about radiation. We've seen this on one of the class sheets that we did, but there's alpha radiation. We talk about those as alpha particles. It looks like a little fish. It's a Greek letter. They're pretty low energy, relatively high mass. They move pretty slowly, and they're a result of alpha decay. Low penetration, if I came up to you with an alpha particle gun, you could put your hand up and stop it, or a sheet of paper. So very, uh, not very dangerous at all. With beta radiation, those are those beta particles, or electrons. Those are a little higher energy. They have a lower mass than an alpha particle, so they move a little bit faster. And they do have some ability to penetrate. Now, if I came up to you with a beta gun, all you'd need to do is wrap yourself in tinfoil. If you've ever seen a TV show where somebody's wearing like a tinfoil hat, you know, uh, something like that, they are not thinking right about things, uh, you can see that that comes from what people kind of have in terms of a limited understanding of radiation. But 
with several sheets of aluminum foil, you can stop some beta particles. So if I ever pull a beta particle gun, you'll know what to do. All right, there's also gamma radiation. That's a little different. Those are high energy gamma rays, extremely high. And we talked about that when we talked about light. Remember that they're very high frequency at the high end of the high frequency end of that electromagnetic spectrum. And they can result from any type of decay. Very highly penetrating and damaging. We protect ourselves from those. You can stop those with several centimeters of lead or very thick concrete. So this is just kind of a little picture to show you how penetrating each of those are. Alpha can be stopped by paper, beta by wood or uh, several sheets of aluminum foil. Gamma, on the other hand, have to be stopped by concrete. And I think we've talked in class about the sources of human exposure. Hopefully what you've realized is that most of the uh, radiation that we're exposed to on an annual basis is beyond what we can control. It comes from things like radon, rocks and soil, cosmic rays, things that we have in our body, as opposed to things that we can control. The stuff from nuclear plants is really small compared to all those natural sources. So nuclear uh, energy is actually a pretty decent uh, source of power. So that's all I wanted to share with you about nuclear energy, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in class.